speak is the Minister of Finance. What recent reports has he received on the economy? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I've received reports showing that the economy is in better shape than two years ago. The economy has grown for five consecutive quarters following an extended recession that began in early 2008, well before the global financial crisis. The 1.7 per cent economic growth in the last nine months exceeds the 1 per cent growth posted over the entire four years, the entire four years up to the beginning of uh, 2010. I've also seen reports that households and businesses are moving away from excessive spending and borrowing uh, that were features of our lopsided economy in the past decade. Instead, they're paying down debt and being careful with their spending. This change is welcome, uh, but it is happening faster than we expected. John Hayes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What role is the government's tax package playing in helping to rebalance the economy? The Honourable <laughs> Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the economy needs to rebalance uh, from its excessive reliance on government spending, on borrowing and on housing, uh, towards exports and investment and savings. And that is what the tax package is designed to do, to push in the direction uh, that people are already going. So the increase in GST will discourage uh, excessive consumption. The increase in the effective tax rate on property uh, will affect, discourage speculative investment in property. And the reduction in income tax reduces the tax on savings, on jobs, on exports and on investment. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, to the Minister, has he received reports that the price of fruit and vegetables has gone up? And while the increase of 2.6 per cent in September may be down to winter, the further price increases since then will all be because of National's increase in GST, inflicting greater costs on hard-working Kiwis who are struggling to meet, make ends meet. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the member uh, may care to take note of the Reserve Bank Governor's comments uh, from the um, annual report yesterday that the inflation risk from G GST is, uh, as he described it, muted uh, so far. Uh, it's a very com well, it's a very competitive market out there, and retailers have to be careful about putting their prices up. However, people are guaranteed to get their income tax cut, and when they look at their after-tax pay over the next few weeks, they will realise just how far a $4 billion income tax goes. With respect to vegetables, and that from 2006, and the 17 of them in the Labor caucus, um, in the two years to September 2008, vegetables went up 21 per cent under Labor. In the two years to September 2010, they went down 6 per cent. John Hayes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What other contributions is the government making to helping New Zealanders through this adjustment and setting the economy on a faster growth path? The Honourable Billingham. Mr Speaker, I think the most significant the contribution the government is making uh, is to absorb, a very, to absorb the shock of this recession uh, on the government's books. This fiscal, year, this fiscal year, the government will run a cash deficit of $13 billion. That is, the government is borrowing $13 billion over the next 12 months uh, to continue with an infrastructure investment program to maintain transfers and to ensure that government services remain in place at a time of stress. This is supporting New Zealanders through the adjustment process, but it can't last forever, and the government will have to tighten up on its spending uh, in order to bring those deficits back to a surplus. John Hayes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Finance, what economic policies would damage New Zealand's economic prospects and leave the vast majority of Kiwis worse off? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, the policies that will do that are policies that create more borrowing, uh, larger deficits, more government debt and higher cost of living increases, and also policies that repeat the mistakes of the last Labor government where they reduced the incentive to work and to save and to invest. And I understand that Labor will be, developed, will be announcing details of policies going in that direction this week.
Mr Speaker, I would listen through the uh, answer the Minister was giving. He is not responsible for policies that are being developed uh, by the opposition, no matter how frightened he might be by them. Well, <laughs> and the member is quite right that the last part of the answer was really, was really out of order. Fortunately, it was mercifully brief, but the member is absolutely right with this point of order. Uh, question number three, the Honourable Shane Jones. Okay. 